Humanity's exploration of space began on the 4th of October 1957, when the Sputnik 1 satellite blasted into orbit. Within just two years of Sputnik's launch, we visited the Moon. It took the US and Soviet Union several goes, and in 1959, NASA's unmanned probe Pioneer 4 flew past and measured the Moon's radiation levels. Of the 80 missions to the Moon, 45 have been successful and include six manned landings. Three years later, in August 1962, NASA's Mariner 2 probe flew past Venus and gave us our first images of the planet, or at least of the tops of its clouds. The next planet we reached was Mars. NASA's Mariner 4 made it in July 1965 after a seven and a half month journey. The Red Planet has a fearsome reputation for being a difficult target. Half the missions sent there have failed. Most notoriously, in 1999, NASA lost its Mars Climate Orbiter because of a mix-up over Imperial and metric units. However, in recent years, the Mars rovers have been an outstanding success. So far, the only spacecraft to have visited Mercury is Mariner 10 in November 1973. Because the planet is gripped so tightly by the sun's gravity and has no atmosphere to slow a spacecraft down, a trip to Mercury needs more rocket fuel than it would take to escape the solar system completely. Mariner 10 mapped less than half the planet during its three flybys. NASA's Messenger spacecraft will finish the job starting in January 2008. Pioneer 11 visited both Jupiter and Saturn in 1979. As of 2007, Pioneer 10 and 11 are on their way out of the solar system, but have mysteriously drifted off course by thousands of miles. Nobody knows why. One possibility is that our theory of gravity is wrong. The Voyager missions took a more leisurely tour of Jupiter and gave us the first close-up pictures of its moons. To the astonishment of astronomers, the four major moons turned out to be extremely diverse worlds. The biggest shock was Io, which is the most volcanically active world in the solar system, because it's deep in Jupiter's magnetic field. Moving out from the planet, Europa has an ocean beneath its outer layer of ice and could be a likely site for primitive life. Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system and is actually larger than the planet Mercury. Callisto, being the furthest out, is only weakly affected by Jupiter's magnetic field and could be a safe base for human exploration of the Jovian system. After leaving Jupiter, Pioneer 11 also visited Saturn. The rings around the planet are mostly composed of ice with a sprinkling of rocky dust. Because of the rings, Saturn is generally thought to be the most spectacular site in the solar system. Saturn's largest moon is Titan and is the only moon in the solar system to have a dense atmosphere. It's also the only body other than Earth where there is good evidence for liquid on the surface. Enceladus is a puzzle. This tiny moon is far too small to be geologically active, yet it has vast geysers erupting from its poles. No one's sure what drives them. Another mysterious moon is Iapetus, the two sides of which are different colours. The bright region is icy, but we don't know why the other is so dark. The seventh planet, Uranus, was first visited in 1986 by Voyager 2. It seems to be much less active than the other giant planets. We might expect that to be because it's so far from the sun's heat. But that theory fell apart when Voyager 2 reached Neptune in 1989. Neptune is half as far out again, and yet is much more active. One particularly noticeable feature is Neptune's great dark spot. Neptune's largest moon is Triton, which is unique among the large moons in the solar system. It orbits the wrong way around its parent planet. For this reason, it's thought to have been captured from the Kuiper belt. In 1986, we were able to send probes to a comet for the first time. Halley's Comet returned to the inner solar system in that year and was visited by no less than five probes from three different countries. In 50 years we've managed to visit all the eight major planets and many of their moons, plus various comets and asteroids, but there's no shortage of new places to go. We already have a probe on the way to Pluto. Launched in 2006, the New Horizons mission will reach the dwarf planet in 2015. Still further out, there is Eris, which because of its immense distance was only discovered in 2005. 
and beyond Eris there is the vast Oort cloud, believed to be the source of all the comets that visit the inner solar system. Though it's far beyond our present capabilities, the most obvious extrasolar target is Alpha Centauri, our nearest star. It's four light years away, or a quarter of a million times the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Another promising star is Gliese 581, a red dwarf just over 20 light years away. In April 2007, astronomers discovered a planet that looks remarkably similar to Earth in orbit around Gliese 581. Unfortunately, planet Gliese 581c looks like it might not be habitable because of a runaway greenhouse effect. However, the star is home to another planet that might just support life. And beyond that, it all depends on how ambitious you are.